Good evening, everyone. My name is John Liljequist, and I'm the Asia Pacific Director for Allurian Technologies. I would like to welcome you this evening to Information Evening on Allurian Weight Management Program by Melbourne Gastric Surgery. So this evening we have Dr. Rune Deer, who will be talking about the product and the procedure, also followed by his dietitian, Ms. Hannah Wilson. And we also have a couple of very special guests from the UK, some Allurian patients. So with that, I will turn, oh, before that, I should let everyone know that we have a questions tab. So throughout the presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the questions tab and we will address them along the way. So with that, I will turn it over to Dr. Deer. Take it away, sir. Thank you, John. Thank you to everybody who is here today attending this evening web webinar, information evening, uh, sparing your time away. But I always say information is transformation. And I think it is critical for us to get our information from the correct sources. So I always believe that you cannot change your destination overnight, but you can certainly change your direction. And I think this is where when we come to meetings, comes to information sessions, we gain information that allow us to change our direction. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Arun Deer. I'm a gastrointestinal and a bariatric surgeon, and I've practiced my craft for over two and a half decades now. I'm also a, a researcher, a senior lecturer with Monash University, and I also bring in a holistic approach to managing the, the scourge of obesity because it's not just a quick fix issue. It requires a very holistic approach. Uh, about four years ago, I wrote this book called Happy Gut, Healthy Weight, and it brings in lots of tenets that are critical to weight management, most importantly being your metabolism. And I'll touch upon that briefly. Um, our practice has done over 5,000 procedures, and we were recognized by the Bariatric Surgery Registry for the largest number of procedures in both 2019 and 2020, uh, excepting for the lockdown and the challenges that the lockdown brought. But there are these two aspects that I want to bring about before we actually delve into the subject of gastric balloon itself. The one thing is that why do attempts at weight loss fail repeatedly, sometimes even after surgery or gastric balloon? And I think it is really critical to understand that, that we, when we get on this dieting roller coaster, it really doesn't serve us. And many of us are really in tune with this, that the yo-yo dieting concept does not help anybody build their confidence because even before you start a dieting program you are worried about the failures and this is where it is critical to understand regardless of whether it is weight loss surgery or the gastric balloon that one may be considering you got to understand the power that rests in the gut brain axis and when people understand this they actually start to use any procedure that is done on the abdomen, including the gastric balloon, and to use it to tap into the gut brain axis to create lasting behavioral change. Now, I won't go into the actions of how the balloon creates the shift or how surgery creates a shift, but suffice it to say that it is a complex mechanism. And in that mechanism, we got to throw in the most important determinant of our long term weight, which is the balance between the good and the bad bacteria in the gut which reflect your metabolism. Now, without making it very technical, the whole focus of a after procedure support program is not just calorie counting, is not just seeing how many carbs are you having and how much protein you're having, but also to understand that we have to focus on the metabolism because that is what accounts for about 70% of our calorie consumption. And science is proving that there is a difference in the metabolism of somebody who's overweight versus somebody who's lean based on their gut bacteria, their blood tests, their blood markers and things like that. And a lot of it is determined by the amount of processed food that the individuals are consuming. 
Hence, we are seeing that there is a difference in the gut bacteria or the gut function in, in states of stress or disease. And by the way, obesity is classed as a disease by the World Health Organization versus the healthy status, which is where the metabolism is most optimal. So if you if anybody's interested in learning more about this, they can always jump onto my YouTube channel where I've made a specific video on three secrets to optimizing gut health. But the bottom line remains that in order to get the most from any weight management program, balloon, surgery, whatever, you got to optimize your gut health. The second challenge that I hear time and time again from my patients is the myth around I'm overweight because I don't exercise. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a huge believer in exercise, but exercise in order to achieve weight loss is not a good long term strategy. Rather, it puts individuals who are in the higher BMI range at a risk of developing musculoskeletal injuries. And we all know that if you develop an injury, what happens? Well, you are bed bound or you are low on your physical activity for weeks. And what does that lead to? You're only watching TV in that stage because you can't do any physical activity and maybe having the chips or the tub of Tom and Jerry and trying to pep yourself up and that causes further weight gain. So exercise is a great fitness strategy. Don't get me wrong. And I'm a firm believer in that, but it's not a good weight loss strategy. And in order to learn more about my views on the three types of exercises that we all need to know for fitness, you can check out the video that I have on the, my YouTube channel. But for the sake of today's webinar, I want to focus really on what are the tools that are available for weight loss. Now, of course, you know, as they say, different folks, different strokes depends on multitude of conditions, including an individual's BMI, their health status, uh, whether they have reflux or not, have they had previous surgery, what kind of medications they're on, and if they have things like metabolic syndrome or diabetes or sleep apnea. But long and short, there is a place for weight loss surgery for somebody who's in a higher BMI and has got multiple medical problems, such as it could be diabetes or sleep apnea, but the BMI being above 35. But, and, and the same applies to the gastric bypass. But what about somebody who has got a BMI between say 27 to 35? And in my own journey of exploring, when we were looking at bringing in the balloon into our own practice, being the first practice in Victoria to start this, we were looking for something that could assist that segment of patients between the BMR of 27 to that of 35, because for that segment, surgery was too extreme, too excessive. And just a diet program was probably not giving us the enough sort of, you know, buy in to assist these patients. And when the Allurian, uh, Allurian balloon came in, it was a non-surgical weight loss tool which was received with a lot of excitement because it did not have anesthesia no endoscopy involved and that is where we took this program and this tool and really researched it and decided to give it a good hard go and now we have done about 27 balloons and i can tell you apart from a small few initial hiccups it's really been a great journey for our practice as i said to you bmi categories that what we feel is most suitable four is between 27 to 37. One should not have sleep apnea, high blood pressure, joint problems. And if they have diabetes, preferably only medically managed with tablets and under two years duration. The procedure of the ellipse balloon is relatively straightforward in the sense that the balloon is swallowed, not in the physician's office, but we do it in the x-ray department. And then once the balloon has landed in the stomach, we take an x-ray to ensure it is in the correct position. Followed by that, we then start to fill it with 550 mils of specific fluid, which allows 
this balloon to stay for a period of about 16 weeks. But what the company has done, the great technology is fitted this balloon with a self-release valve, which deflates the balloon at about 16 weeks, which passes naturally. So the beauty is there is no need for surgery. Now, of course, there are exceptions that sometimes it may get obstructed and all of that, but those are rare, rare instances rather than common things. Olivia, our first ellipse patient in Victoria, and she's put a video on YouTube, and she actually expresses what the one apprehension that majority of people face, and that is, how are they going to swallow this capsule? And I think it's a video worth watching because she clearly had the same apprehension. And I think she has expressed it really well that the more you are able to relax and deep breathe, the easier it is going to be for you. So it's a video worth watching. And this is something that I reiterate to so many of my patients who are considering this balloon. But in my experience of about 27 patients now, the biggest challenge that I see with the balloon is the first three days need very careful understanding and management. It might include things like intravenous hydration, medications for management of nausea and cramps, such as Zofran, Pentoprazole, Phenargan is something that we have started are using more and more. There is also Akinzio, which is another medication which can actually cause a good sort of, you know, which can give individuals good analgesia and nausea relief. However, it is not on the PBS, so it is a bit expensive. But I often say to my patients, the most important thing they need to know is icy poles, hydrolyte, and diet cordial are going to be their best friends for the first three days. Focus on hydration. Don't worry about nutrition. I go to that extreme. But here is the most important thing. What results can you expect? And this is the question that always gets asked. And I say, based on the information, not from Australia, but from Europe and Middle East, where this balloon has been used for a longer period of time, the studies, initial studies are showing that one can expect about 10 to 15 percent, uh, you know, total body weight loss, which means if somebody is about 100 kilos, they can expect to lose anywhere between 10 to 15 kilos. But the beauty is not just that. The beauty is that the Allurian program, which is a weight management program, which is something that backs the balloon, is not just about weight loss, it's also about weight maintenance. And I think this is where we have taken this program with our allied health team, which is composed of experienced dietitians and psychologists, and the technology that comes with the balloon, like smart scales, smart watches, and blended it with our own existing program, of which is exclusive to our practice patients, and we run it on the Facebook members only group, which is our support group. And we do regular Facebook lives once a fortnight. We've got events, we've got dietitian exercise physiologist sessions, and very importantly, we've got patient stories that allow individuals to stay motivated and to stay on track. We go through a very integrative approach around weight loss because as you saw in our introductory video, it's not just about losing weight. People are not just a number on the scale. It's about feeling happy. It's about feeling great. And that requires a whole person approach, managing, uh, uh, you know, having a routine, managing stress, managing sleep, having a strategy. And it's about if we don't inform ourselves, we will never learn about it. Besides this, it, my patients get copies of my book, which is Happy Gut, Healthy Weight, and also a health and wellness journal called Creating a New You, because we found that journaling is a great tool in creating lasting behavioral change. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and make sure you download my free ebook, which was attached to the registration form of this webinar called Eight Secrets to Healthy Weight Loss. I've also got a YouTube channel. You're welcome to check out some details, some videos that I keep posting on a regular basis over there. And some of them might resonate with you. At the end of the day, I say this, that stop waiting for that perfect diet or exercise plan and make a decision to start your transformation 
today. Thank you for your attention. Uh, and I'm going to take this opportunity to, I would, may I say that, you know, let's keep all our questions to the end so that we can all field the questions, myself, Hannah. And of course, we have got two special guests who are coming in, who are joining us today, who are past Ellurian gastric balloon patients. And I think they would have a wealth of information and experience to share with us. So with that, I'm going to say thank you, but, I'm going to come back shortly uh, once uh, Hannah, who is our practice dietitian, Hannah has been with us for a few years now, and she's been on this journey with us on exploring the benefits that the gastric balloon, ellipse gastric balloon, has to offer to the patients. And I think she has gained a ton of knowledge, ton of information on this, and I really look forward to hearing what she has to share with you all. Thank you again. Thank you so much, everyone. That was very informative, and I'm sure everyone loved hearing you speak. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. I'm really excited to talk to you tonight about the Allurian Balloon and the weight management program that you can expect. My name's Hannah Wilson. I'm an accredited practicing dietitian. I specialize in weight management, so surgical and non surgical options. I'm sure many of you have been on countless diets and you're all dieting experts, but you struggle to maintain any weight loss that you've achieved. So the balloon is very different to any conventional diet you've done. It's designed to give you a honeymoon from hunger. And just like poo here, when you're not feeling hangry all the time, it's a lot easier to breathe and have the space to change your eating habits and lifestyle habits. So that's where this is different. Once you have the balloon placed, you will move through a texture modified diet for the first week. And this is really to help minimize some of the symptoms that you might experience while your stomach is getting used to its new tenant. There will be lots of troubleshooting at this stage. So with myself and Arun and um, nursing staff, should you need extra support? It's also an opportunity for you to just start getting used to what it feels like to eat with a smaller stomach. Once you're through that first week, uh, I'm going to talk you through the keys to success and what sort of habits and changes you want to be making to your lifestyle to make sure that you get the best weight loss outcome while the balloon is in place, but importantly, so that you're setting yourself up to keep this weight loss off for good. Firstly, it's really important to get clear on your why. So why is it so important to you to lose weight or make this change? And getting as deep as you can um, about what this will look like. So how will things be different when you are 10, 20, 30 kilos lighter? Um, getting really you know, um, particular about what sort of changes you want to make and why is a lot more motivating especially when you come up against any stumbling blocks along the way. So we can help you really get clear on that to make sure that you've got a really clear path ahead. Portion sizes, and this is where the balloon is extremely helpful. It helps you to feel really satisfied on small portions of food um, and helps to prevent that snacking in between meals or um, overeating at mealtime. So you can expect your portion size to sit around a cup of food, depending on the composition of the meal. Planning ahead is especially important. So we'll work really closely with you to find a way to add some structure to your day if your day is unstructured, like many of our patients. Um, so we'll work with you and your individual lifestyle and preferences and priorities to find a way to really plan for these eating occasions. And this is one of the key habits that is predictive of weight maintenance um, long term. So it's the best way to help manage your appetite and prevent overeating or grazing, which typically tends to happen as the afternoon rolls around if you know, we haven't been fueling ourselves well enough at breakfast or lunch. With your small portions of food, it's especially important to make sure that you're maximizing every mouthful to protect your nutrition so that you're feeling energized and well. Um, and so that you're getting all the nutrients that you need. So we focus on a predominantly veggie and fruit and produce filled plate. 
and tend to recommend that you reserve the bulky sort of carbohydrates for the smallest part of your meal. So we will work really closely with you to um, make sure that your individual food preferences are still met. You know, this is certainly not a chicken and salad diet. We help to make this really um, sustainable and, and achievable, especially around family meal times and preferences um, of others in the house. So there's a lot of workshopping and a lot of ideas um, provided at this stage too. Um, the way we eat is especially important as well. I'm sure we can all relate to having a snack accident when you're sitting in front of the TV, eating some chips or some chocolate, and then you put your hand in the packet and realize there's nothing left before you've even had a moment to enjoy what's there. So eating with awareness um, and really learning to eat in response to hunger signals and stopping when you feel satisfied is a really important tool that will help you maintain your weight loss long-term. And not having that persistent hunger all the time makes it really easy to start increasing your awareness of some of your triggers to eating. Um, the headspace stuff, so undoubtedly with any change, there's always going to be an element of doubt that creeps in. It's very normal to compare your weight loss um, success to somebody else, to have doubts and fears that the weight might come back on again. Um, you might notice some old habits creeping back in again at some stage. So this is where working really closely with your team is key. So we can help you with all the strategies to overcome these really normal um, thought patterns that, that occur with any weight loss journey. So essentially, we're here to support you with a style that works for you. We're here to help you troubleshoot any concerns and help you get really clear on your goals and help guide you to meet them. We're also here to help reduce some of the mental load. Making change can be really overwhelming. So we're here to step that out for you and make it really clear and really achievable for you. And ultimately, we're here to empower you to take control and be your cheerleader. So first appointment, we'll get to know you. We'll ask lots of questions about your dieting history, what's been helpful, what hasn't, what your lifestyle looks like, what sort of supports you have in place. We'll help you establish some really clear goals and get really deep on your reasons for change. And we'll provide lots of education for you before um, and after placement so that you can get the best out of your balloon experience. And importantly, we'll create a follow-up plan to carry you through. As everyone's already mentioned, we have a whole lot of other supports that you can leverage, exercise, physiology, counseling and psychology, lots of Facebook live sessions and webinars and a private Facebook support group so that you have an opportunity to ask questions along the way and connect with other people who are also on the journey with you. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I look forward to hearing the experience of a couple of our patients and hearing any questions you guys might have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Hannah. That was nice. Uh, I don't know if uh, John is going to be coming over, but I believe we have got two guests, special guests who are going to be coming, uh, joining in, uh, who have done the full program. And uh, we would love to see their videos first. Uh, John, is that what is on the agenda now? Yeah, yep. here it comes. Yep. Beautiful. My name is Georgie, I am 31 and I'm a carer. I started gaining weight when I had my children. After my second child, I had done a few diets and I lost weight and I just gained weight again. And then again, I'd go back in a circle and just lose weight and gain it again. I was very uncomfortable and conscious about the way I looked. Um, I'd get out of breath and I just had no energy. So I couldn't run around the park with my kids and have fun. I just felt like miserable and I just felt like I couldn't do, I couldn't be a good mum. My name is Vicky, I'm 31 and I work in a small supermarket. My weight's been a problem since I was about 16. Um, I had some family things that happened and my way of kind of escaping was with food. And then my mental health took a bit of a dive with depression and anxiety. So it's been my kind of comfort to eat my emotions. 
My friend, she asked me to be a bridesmaid at her wedding and obviously I was really excited to do it but then as soon as I got home I thought I don't want to look like this and that was the main push for me to lose weight. I wanted to have more energy and just fit in nicer clothes and go out with my friends and look nice and be able to play with my kids. Before starting my Elorian programme, my relationship with like my body was I hated myself. I was attracted to the Elorian programme because I kind of watched how Georgie was doing with it, how her progress was going and how well she was doing. And I felt like it would be a really good alternative to surgery for me because I want kids and stuff in the future and it's a short recovery time. I decided to pick the Lurian programme over the other weight loss remedies because I didn't have to be put to sleep, I didn't need to have any anaesthesia and it was a 20 minute procedure. I went after work and got it done and was back to work on Monday morning. When I got to the clinic, I met my surgeon and he showed me the capsule and explained what he was going to be doing. I was going to be swallowing it with some water. The day of my placement, I found it really difficult because I suffer from quite bad anxiety. When I got in, the surgeon was really helpful. He calmed me down. He used a stylet to assist me in swallowing it. Once it was in my stomach, he did an x-ray to make sure it was placed in the right place. And then he filled it with distilled water, checked the x-ray again to make sure it was all okay. And then that was it, I was done. I'm on week 14 of the Lurian programme and I've lost 29 pounds so far and I'm feeling happier and I have lots more energy and my relationship with food has changed. When I got my balloon I was given um, some digital scales and a watch and an app that connects to the scales which I use every week to weigh myself and then I send my results to my dietitian and it's nice to see my weight going down on the graph. At the start, I was hoping that it would stop me feeling really hungry and hopefully I wouldn't crave the takeaways and constantly wanting to eat and generally just kind of hope that with losing the weight, I would have more energy so I'd feel more confident to go out and do more things. Before the programme, I pretty much lived off takeaways, fizzy drinks, snacking. I found a lot of support online from other people that have had the balloon or they're even thinking of getting the balloon. When my friend saw that I was doing really well with the balloon, she, she wanted to get it done as well. Um, so I gave her some advice on where to get it done and told her how it would be. She decided to get it done and since then we've been supporting each other every day. We message each other and um, what we're eating and how we're feeling and just support each other throughout the journey. It's really important to have support. Me and my friend Georgie have kind of always done the diets and things together and tried to kind of lose weight to get where we wanted to be. So my kind of my wedding was like a focus point, I think mainly for me to feel more confident and in my dress to feel like I look amazing and not worry that my hips feel too big or I look really fat and frumpy and just to be more me and enjoy the day more. It's been nice to kind of go through this journey and be quite successful with it with Georgie. I would 100% recommend the Alluring Programme to anybody because it's a great way to lose weight and it makes you feel amazing. This is a big step for me being on camera today if I found it difficult being on camera in front of my children on holiday. So this is a great step for me. So like, I'm looking forward to doing holiday videos next year with my family. People sort of start to notice that I've lost weight and I seem more confident to them and more bubbly and more outgoing and I'm more inclined to want to go out and socialise more as opposed to trying to hibernate. So yeah, they notice I'm a lot happier than I was before. Congratulations, Georgie and Vicky. Wow, what a journey that was. And thank you so much for being with us this evening. Uh, evening in, in Melbourne, of course, you know, is it, it's morning in, for you guys, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, uh, maybe, can I start with Georgie? Uh, just a quick one, more out of my own curiosity, uh, that out of, what was the one thing, now looking back, again, we are trying to join the dots as we look back. What is the one thing that you felt 
the balloon gave you, which the diet programs that you had tried prior could not sort of, you know, uh, sort of fulfill that need for men, not just weight loss, but maintaining your weight loss? Well, I, seeing the results definitely encouraged me to keep going. And it just felt like, it just felt easy, like not having the hunger there when I'm eating healthy definitely, definitely helped. And that's how I carried on my journey, losing weight. Right. Did you get the sense of fullness? That was one of the biggest things that you would say in comparison to the previous instances where you had tried without yeah. anything else, just the diet program? Yeah, um, feeling full was the main thing for me and actually trying different foods because a lot of diets I did before, I, I focused on carbs and veggies. I didn't really put the protein first. So with this diet... Um, Obviously, I ate more protein. That was like my main. Every time I went for food, it was the first thing I made sure I had on my plate was protein. And it's more filling than carbs. And obviously more. Nutrients. Right, right, right. So, yeah, I just looked at the way I ate a lot different to other diets. And it just didn't feel like a diet to me. Mm, right. Vicky, can I ask you, what was your experience, the biggest difference? And I believe one of you is doing the program the second time around as well, because you've you've really benefited from the balloon the first time. And the balloon, by the way, can be done twice. Like, you know, you can have two sets of balloons. Uh, I mean, in succession, of course, you know, not at the same time. So, uh, Vicky, can I ask you, what is your, uh, you know, and what is your main driver being and the difference that you found with the balloon itself when you use um, it in comparison to the diet programs? With the balloon itself, it made me feel fuller quicker so I could eat less than I would with like a normal diet. Um, and like Georgie said, you concentrate more on protein and you realize that you don't need carbs to give you energy to carry on doing things in, in the day. Um, and generally, you just don't feel hungry. So it fills the space. So you, you feel like you don't need to snack and you don't need to eat like you would on like a normal diet. You just have really small portions. Yes, yeah, yes. Exactly. Now, uh, a question specifically for you, Wiki. I hear, heard you say in the testimonial video that you had issues with a bit of anxiety and a bit of stress. How did you go with swallowing that big capsule? Tell us that. Did you have stress? Were you worked up on the day? And how did you overcome that? Um, I had um, some diazepam before I went in, so it helped right. to relax me. Um, I had Georgie in with me, um, so she kind of played some music to help keep me calm and relaxed, and the surgeon just generally was quite good in talking to me and trying to keep me relaxed and talking through what he was doing. Um, so, yeah, it's. I think it was just taking my mind off of the fact that I was swallowing a capsule that helped to do the procedure. Beautiful, beautiful. I think looks like I'm Georgie, like you are a very strong pillar of support mm -hmm. and an advocate for all these balloon patients, you know. Good on you. Thanks. Uh, yeah, and, and tell us a little bit about what were your challenges, Georgie, after you had the balloon for the first time? Like, was it something consistent with what you expected? Like, we hear a lot of nausea, and this is my own cohort of patients that I've been trying to kind of, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, not just uh, physical sort of advice, but they need emotional support as well. Yes, you definitely need someone to help you get through the first few days. Um, I did have some sickness. It wasn't too bad. I was expecting a lot worse, but everyone is different. Um, I say, like, definitely you need to rest and get your hydration. That's top priority. Don't worry about... Uh, the diet. Mm. Um, I had things like Lucozade, ice lollies, just a bit of honey under the tongue just to, to get that sweetness and some energy. 
because you do feel really low on energy if you haven't had any sugar mm. and you're just drinking water but you definitely need um some support there i've got two mm. children so if i didn't have my husband i i, I don't think i would have been able to get through the first week of being yeah. well yeah so have you done the balloon twice now georgie um i currently have a second balloon in yeah got it got it is there is it any different the second time uh than the first time uh, just out of yeah, uh, it's definitely been a different experience so far um i think like in which way? because my stomach i think it feels like it's smaller from before so when the second balloon went in it felt a lot tighter and obviously i've lost the weight so i could see it more like sticking out a little bit um the sickness right. was harder but it was it's it was expected again so i knew what i was in for mm -hmm. but the first one <laughs> Got it. Ladies, I'm going to jump in. Great questions, Arun. I'm really keen to hear how your experience of the balloon passing has been um, and, and what it's been like after the balloon maintaining the habits that you've had in place. So for me, I, I never I never felt the balloon go or see any evidence of it gone. I The the week that was coming, so like week 16, I kind of like felt like it was, it was soon. And I just woke up one day feeling different. There was like a little bit of cramping, but nothing out of the ordinary, like um, just a little bit of a bellyache, but it was fine for me. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. I didn't, I had a few cramps in my stomach um, around with the end of week 16. Um, but other than that, I didn't even notice it pass. Mm. And right. have, how's your eating habits been since the balloon has um, passed, Vicky? Um, have you been able to maintain those habits? Uh, yeah, mostly. Um, yeah. You kind of you have like the odd day where like you, you might have eat a little bit more than you would normally, um, but generally I still eat on a smaller plate. I still concentrate on my protein, um, and I try and not have like concentrate on carbs um to mm -hmm. give me energy um I, I still don't feel hungry um which is quite a nice feeling so you kind of don't like mm -hmm. i don't really notice i don't have the balloon anymore um so i still stay full incredible and you mentioned in your video vicky that your relationship with food completely changed how how has that improved and what sort of things did you have to work on throughout that process to improve your relationship with food um it for me it was the the mental relationship with food um so i kind of i used to binge eat quite a lot um i'd live on takeaways i never really had the motivation to cook um and i never really understood the relationship between food and like how to fuel your body properly. Um, so with the nutritionist, um, I kind of worked on understanding what you actually need to eat to keep you healthy um, and how to kind of get out of snacking and just completely change the men mental approach to food. Yeah. It's incredible. Georgie, can I ask what was your starting BMI, uh, you know, I, just uh, and where are you today it was nearly 40 i think it was like 39.9 um right as of now i think it's about 31 32 um i'm very short so my bmi is always quite big anyway yeah yeah and vicky can i ask you if you don't mind what was your starting bmi before you had the balloon um, I was similar to Georgie. I was around 39, 40. Um, now I'm around 33, 34. Right. Right. Okay. Mm. Great. And ladies, have, have you maintained the weight loss since the balloon's gone out? Georgie, I know you had a bit of a short transition between the first and the second, but um, has the weight loss maintained? Yeah, well, from my first balloon, I in the three months i on and off put on the most was five pounds mm -hmm. i lost it but that was from like seeing friends again and 
alcohol, which I didn't have during the balloon. Um, but I feel like if I have a bad day, well, before I got the second balloon, that I knew it was just a treat and I go back the next day and carry on as if it never happened. Whereas other diets, if I fell off the wagon, it would be like, oh, I've had a bad day. What's another bad day? And it would be like, oh, it's just been a bad week. And it would just continue. And then I'd struggle to get back into eating healthy again. Whereas with the baby, so much, so much like, more balanced mindset around food and less of that all or nothing thinking that we see a lot of our clients come through with. And it's amazing to hear how, you know, in such a short space of time, you've been able to rewire your thinking around, you know, it's a, a setback rather than a failure and it's a learning experience. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. And I think the other thing that I'm, I heard very clearly was the uh, what we call it is, you know, the accountability buddies, the, the, the partnership that Vicky and Georgie, both of you established to support each other on this journey. And I think that's what we find consistently, that people who keep each other accountable, and that's what uh, prompted us to set up like our own support group for our own practice because there's a common philosophy behind it and a common message. So uh, are there any other people in your support group or is it the two of you who have really bonded so well because of the balloon? I, that's how I can see that, uh, like in the background. Um, well, we've always been friends. We used to work together and a lot of our like talk was always lose weight. If was getting married, it was like, let's do this. I and she followed because she saw my results. There's no fire in the background, I take it. I heard the ambulance siren. <laughs> no, I live on a main road, so you hear them going past. <laughs> okay, okay. No. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, Georgie. Um, yeah, but you need to have some support. I've got other friends that have not had the balloon and they don't have any problems with their weight, but they've been really supportive of me and like egging me on and like keep going because I get up on Instagram and showed everyone what I was doing I didn't want to hide it because I knew people would ask questions about me losing weight so I was very open and honest about it friends so it was obviously very noticeable when you were losing weight but were you yeah. open about saying that I have had a gastric balloon yeah I still am as well like yesterday I saw a right. lady that I haven't seen in ages and she said oh you've lost lots, lots of weight are you okay like I was like yeah I'm trying to lose weight um, but just her saying like, oh, you've lost weight. I, I was so happy. I came home and told my husband. I was like, someone's noticed my weight loss. Um, it's really yeah. nice when people comment on it. And I, I, I tell them, I say, yeah, I had, a, I had a balloon and I swallowed it. And I tell them all about it because I'm, I'm not ashamed. I, I tried everything mm -hmm. else. How did it go with you, Vicky? Uh, what was your sort of when people started, uh, you know, if they started noticing you, were you open about it? Uh, because sometimes the perception is that, you know, with surgery, at least I can say that uh, the public opinion is, oh, you've taken the easy way out. Uh, but that is not the case. You still need to put in your uh, hard work. You know? So what was your experience, Vicky? Um, it, it was kind of similar. Um, most most people that noticed, I told them and I told them all about and like how it works and what it was like to swallow it. I mean, at, at work, I had a couple of people that were like, surely that's the easy way out. Um, and I was like, when you think about it at first, it does seem like it, but it's actually not. And it you, you have to put the effort in to get the results out. It's not like a quick fix, as most people think. Um, but mm -hmm. when, you, when you talk about it and the process you go through to make the changes, you kind of understand it and they, they support everything. Yeah. Now tell us, both of you, did you, during that 16-week period after placing the balloon, could you actually feel the fullness all through that period and one time you just woke up and you said, oh, the fullness is no longer there? Did you actually feel anything? For, for, uh, me, I I was, sorry, Vix. Uh, for, for me, I was always full and even after the balloon was gone and I just assumed it was gone because I never found it, um, I felt the same. And I carried on eating off the small plate. And if I like go to a restaurant or anything with friends, um, I would order the food, but and then ask for like a smaller plate so I can take off what I know all I need is. 
Um, mm. But I don't need, I still feel that I could carry on eating the small portions after. It's like your body adapts to it. Mm. Yeah. Was that your experience as well, Wiki? Yeah, I, I, even now I still feel full. Um, the, when, once you get, your body gets used to the balloon and it being there and like the cramps stop and things like that, it it doesn't change. You, the whole, like the whole time I felt full, I felt like good. Um, and even now, mm. you, you don't you don't feel like you need to carry on eating. Mm. Um, That's... Ladies, I'm keen to hear about what effect it's had on things like food cravings. Did you notice having the balloon in place helped to completely get rid of those or did they reduce? Did you have to work really hard on other strategies? Um, how's your experience with that been? I think, like, for me, because I just kind of, like, went cold turkey, not going to touch that stuff, um, the more I didn't touch it, the more I didn't need it, didn't want it. And that was a really good feeling because in the evenings I would fancy, like, cheese and crackers or some crisps and chocolate and it just... It's like it just erased from me and I didn't need it. Like I could sit and watch my husband eating it and I didn't even want any of it. I just thought, well, you eat it then, no, no, you get fat. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like it, all the cravings for me just disappeared. And if, like, after the balloon, um, if I did feel like I needed a, a bit of chocolate, I could have, like, one or two squares and that would be satisfying enough for me. Whereas before I'd eat a whole bar of dairy milk in one sitting and like you say reach yeah, for it more. gone um so yeah like my sweet tooth has disappeared i'm nowhere near like i used to be so it's really good it's incredible i can see how it really does help improve your relationship with food because a lot of people lose trust in themselves around these types of foods so to be able to still enjoy sweet foods when you want them but actually prove to yourself that you can just have a little bit and enjoy that and be done with it is so powerful. And I think from a confidence point of view, it's incredible because a lot of people stop trusting themselves around food. Was that your experience, Vicky? Um, yeah, quite similar. Um, I did have a few cravings kind of creep in towards the end. But it's like George said, you can have like one square or two squares of chocolate and you, you feel satisfied in the craving goes, whereas before you would eat like an entire cake and you still want it um but yeah you just you can still have the little bits of things so you can still eat what you want essentially but it's just very small yeah ladies i have a question uh techie question how was the technology you know the smart scales and the app how helpful did you find that was that motivating enough to keep you on track yeah definitely the the scales are really good and when you look back and you see the chart like going down and your bmi going down and your fat going down it it really makes a difference just standing on a regular scale that just has a number mm. Mm. and what about you wiki what did you think the smart watch and the app and the the smart scales um the, the smart scales i thought were really good because like if you had a week where you maintained you can see like if anything else has changed like sometimes you would maintain and your water would go up or your muscle mass would increase and your body fat would go down so it kind of gives you an insight to see that it's not just a number on the scales and there's other things that contribute to it mm -hmm. um the smartwatch I did you use because <laughs> i've got my own <laughs> samsung <laughs> Right. Ladies, did you find knowing that the team were also viewing your data, did that help add an element of accountability to your <laughs> tracking and, and what you were doing? You being watched. <laughs> yeah, I, to be honest, I, did, I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> I obviously sent my weight off to my dietitian every week. Yeah. And that really helped me because I thought, you know, it's is someone's watching in that sense and it was nice to get her feedback like when she would say like well done you've done amazing keep it up and it just helps you motivates you even more mm. awesome amazing i have got a couple of questions that have come up if i can just uh, see if it is possible uh there's a question by uh sophie when can you start exercising after insertion 
Well, perhaps I can answer that, you know, exercise really depends on what kind of exercise we are talking about. Generally, walking and uh, doing gentle cardio type exercise, we can say that you can pretty much walking and all of that can be started pretty much the next day onwards. But something more like exercising, as we saw Vicky and Georgie, you, we saw you on exercise bikes and doing those sort of things, which was great. And I think you can start that within a week or so, I would imagine. It a lot depends on how you're coping with the initial, you know, the, the shock to the body when you get the balloon placed. You know, as you said, it's really about maintaining your hydration first. You don't want to dehydrate yourself by exercising hard. So I think I tell my patients to use common sense in a week's time once their nausea has settled and they're back to some form of like a semi-solid diet because uh, you know smoothies and then uh, soups is the next phase after liquid phase and then we go to the soft baby food once they are on so some sort of a baby food or some sort of a solid food they can start cardio type exercises was that your experience as well georgie um, yeah, so I felt well. I was back to work on day three, and I was doing caring, which was is quite a physical job. Um, mm. I felt like my energy was increasing from day three, um, but exercise. Was, I I waited about two weeks before I you know done extra exercise on on top of my normal daily like do school run and things like that. Beautiful. And Vicky, what about you? Did you have any comments on the exercise side of things? Um, I mean, I was back to work with sort of, I think it was day three or four and I work in a, in a shop. So I was kind of running around uh, heavy lifting and on my feet for like nine hours in a day. Um, but generally, once you get over the first sort of like two, three days, I mean, I felt mm. more and energy levels were going up and I felt like I could do more. So I think it just depends on how you feel and once you kind of go back to normal. Right, right, right. Now, there's another question I have from uh, Rob and Michelle is that, you know, would you consider a higher BMI? Now, uh, I think the company recommends BMI up to 40. I'm just taking a little bit of a conservative and a cautious approach, given that we are still early on in the learning curve of the balloon. So we are actually considering from the BM of 27 to 37 with those sort of medical criteria, because see, the reality is that it's not just about looking at weight loss. It's also about how it impacts your medical conditions for those people who have associated medical conditions such as diabetes sleep apnea, high blood pressure. We understand they're all weight related, related conditions and should improve with weight loss. But I think the higher the BMI, more challenging it is to achieve that long-term weight loss success. So we have kept it to BMI of 37, but I think there is a, a, a level of flexibility around it, if that's something that I can answer. And as we have heard from Georgie and Vicky, that they have had a pretty impressive journey, but I also see that in your journey, there is a level of mental commitment. You know, your mindset has shifted. As you said, Georgie, you just deleted sugars uh, in a way from your diet, which was like a routine from what I understood before you had the balloon placed. Yeah. And same with you, Vicky, how you had the support of Georgie and also, of course, your own willpower and your commitment to stay focused on your own health and well-being. So I think the BMI then becomes more of a number uh, and is not really reflective of the overall individual's mindset. We were just yeah, going to yeah. wrap up and address a couple of final questions about cost yes. and um, about obtaining a GP referral. Do you need a referral from a GP? Yes, we do need a GP referral uh, only because we want the GPs to be involved in the overall management of the uh, you know overall management of your weight loss journey making sure that this is monitored now i was hoping that my practice manager would be covering these two questions but you know she had to uh, sort of attend to some personal commitments 
The cost of the balloon, again, this is the big question. It is 6750. What is included is dietitian and surgeon appointments times two, uh, after procedure support, which we provide for lifetime. We've got books, group membership, and also invitation to our events. The more important thing also is to be able to have the ability to have a chat with our patient advisor. We've got some dates available if anybody of you is interested. Uh, that would be the 23rd of November and 6th of December this year. So I think, uh, can I say if I have everybody's permission, it has been a delightful evening to be with every one of you and I thank every one of you for being here, especially Wiki, uh, Georgie, Hannah, thank you for your participation. And I want to thank uh, everybody from Elurian, including John, Tim, and James for your support. So thank you, everybody. Uh, stay safe and keep shining and keep moving forward you. on your journey towards health and well-being. Lost, lost, lost journey with Elurian. The Illyrian program, program is a weight is a loss weight program, program centered, centered around, around a revolutionary, revolutionary gastric, gastric balloon, balloon that requires no surgery, no endoscopy, and no anesthesia. The Illyrian balloon will help you embrace healthier eating habits, recommended by a care team that will support you throughout your journey. The program also includes digital tools to help you stay motivated and maintain a healthy lifestyle. People lose an average of 10 to 15% of their body weight in approximately 16 weeks with the Illurion program and maintain up to 95% of the weight lost at one year follow up. The Illurion balloon is placed by a certified healthcare professional during a 15 minute procedure. The balloon is packaged into a capsule that's attached to a thin catheter for easy placement. Your healthcare professional will help you swallow the capsule with a glass of water. Once the balloon is in place, your healthcare professional will take an x-ray to confirm proper placement. Once in the stomach, the vegetarian capsule degrades and the balloon will be filled with 550 milliliters of water. Then, a second x-ray is taken to ensure filling is complete. The full balloon is roughly the size of a grapefruit. Your healthcare professional will gently remove the catheter from your mouth. The Illurion balloon placement is now complete. Your clinic will set you up with your Illurion app and link it to your Illurion connected scale and health tracker and you can go home to start your weight loss journey. While in the stomach, the Illurion balloon helps reduce the feeling of hunger by taking up space in the stomach. It creates a feeling of fullness, encouraging smaller portion sizes and helping you to reduce snacking. After approximately 16 weeks, the balloon automatically empties and passes out naturally when you use the toilet. During these 16 weeks, people lose an average of 10 to 15% of their total body weight. You won't be alone as you achieve your weight loss goals. The Illurion program includes ongoing support from your doctor and nutritionist for at least six months. They will work with you to change your diet and exercise habits as part of a healthy and holistic approach to losing weight. In addition, you will receive an Illurion connected scale and an Illurion health tracker. Both will be connected to your Illurion app to help track your progress. You will be able to share your successes in real time with your healthcare team. A temporary balloon placement does not mean temporary weight loss. The Illurion program kickstarts sustained lifestyle changes to help you reach your target weight loss and then keep the weight off. Join the world's fastest growing weight loss program and start your Illurion journey today.